Hello and welcome to Trader Chat. It's been a very good few days for all the home nations, uh, pretty much except the Republic of Ireland, and we've become very used to that here, but uh, that's how it is. We're going to go through the uh, football betting that has happened over the last few days in terms of the international qualifications for the World Cup and so forth, with the Premier League returning at the weekend. We've lots more to go through today. Uh, very, very dramatic stuff in the golf. You also have uh, the Sport and Personality of the Year, which is going to be a pretty lively betting market. Tennis, racing, big win for Baid in France. And uh, what else have we got here? we got a bit of Formula 1 thrown in. And we got Flynn Gowers, who's still not quite a father, but time is closing in on you, Flynn. It certainly is. We're edging closer and closer. She's due on uh, Thursday this week. So uh, any moment now is uh, getting to that stage where I think that she wants uh, him to come out now. So we are both pretty much ready to go. Uh, things cross all goes right. And I, yeah, can't wait for the little man to be here. But before that happens, we've got loads of sports to talk about. Tips on each of two before and after the due date. Oh, it's got to be after. It's the uh, first baby, so it's got to be after, you would imagine. That's probably why I'm not a bookmaker, and you are, Finn. How did Star Sports get on the football over the weekend? Uh, obviously, England, Scotland, Northern Ireland, and Wales all victorious, but Ireland, after the buoyant uh, defeat, rather, in Portugal, managed a one-all draw against Azerbaijan. Uh, it was a decent weekend, to be fair. In these uh, World Cup qual uh, qualifiers, it, um, I mean, outside of the Euros and outside of the World Cup, the qualifiers are pretty much damn squibs in terms of betting heats. Um, mainly because they tend to be very, very one-sided, although we did mm. see um, a couple of kind of funny results. Um, I think Italy drew, didn't they? They drew one all. Uh, yeah. And I think France drew one of their matches um, just off the top of my head. Um, yeah, Italy-Switzerland was... last night was the draw. And uh, yeah, so the odd, the odd kind of um, favor bookies favourable result, I guess. Yeah, and, and in these tough qualifiers, when you've got such short prices, you only need one of those big teams to not perform and not get the win because it's all just, it's all hackers um, mm. rather, uh, rather than decent singles and people getting involved in the first goal scorer markets and stuff. It's all just um, all just accumulators. Um, so it was decent to get a couple of those beat. Uh, we have actually seen some money uh, for England for the World Cup, would you believe, uh, into 7-1 to one from 8-1. to one. Uh, We laid a fair few bit, uh, bets at the 8-1 to one mark. So a lot of people thinking that after these couple of decent performances from England, that they're going to go and get the job done in the big tournament next year. And it, it does feel great to come out of the Euro straight away and know that we're going to be going into the World Cup next year. Um, although I'm not too sure about the plans uh, from FIFA to get uh, the World Cup every two years. What, uh, what are your thoughts on that as a punter and as a general football fan, Johnny? I think it's bananas, and I, I just see UEFA has obviously come out against it. Um, I think the World Cup being in Qatar is is actually a disgrace. Um, I don't think I actually don't think countries should even be going there. There's so much so much wrong with that. Um, and yeah, the World Cup every two years would just be a continuation of that farcical situation. We have very, you know, very good traditional kind of tournaments in the continents as well. And I presume you agree with all of that. I do indeed. I just think that when you have too much of something, it can uh, it can completely um, gloss, gloss over the quality and can just mm. make it a bit a bit mundane. Um, I, I guess we would have similar conversations about five day Cheltenham. It's all a kind of similar thing, isn't it? If you if you have too much of something, you don't want it anymore. Um, I'm, I'm I'm pretty happy with how it is at the moment. I don't feel like I I crave for more international football. I don't think anyone does, to be honest. No. I, do really, I do really enjoy the tournaments when they're here, but I, but I don't watch one and think, oh yeah, I really want to go through that again. In, in, I mean, it would be kind of year on year off, wouldn't it, uh, with the Euros as well. So, um, and you'd have to imagine it would kind of um, it would take away from from the Euros as well because you're having a, a more and more World Cup. So I'm pr I'm pretty happy with just how it is at the moment. I don't think we need to change it. I don't think we need to try and re reinvent the wheel in every single sport at the moment. I feel like the governing bodies of each sport are just trying to completely change everything and just again what makes it so great at the moment it's just trying to inc increase the uh, m how they can actually market the product when I just don't think that they need to be worrying about that too much to be honest um just in regards to the World Cup qualifiers we do have group betting on site uh, so we got all the group betting there if you did want to have a go uh, at picking the winners of the groups and uh, we've, we've obviously got the World Cup outrights up there as well uh, the games are continuing from tomorrow so there's plenty to get stuck into uh, and if you uh, just don't like internationals quite as much, um, I mean, I, I would be of that camp. I, I would prefer the uh, the Premier League stuff. Uh, then we've got loads of markets going on in the Premier League and that gets uh, back on the way this weekend. It does indeed, yeah. It's going to be a fascinating season as well. Let's turn to racing now. And uh, the star that is by E took the step up um, in class uh, in his stride, really. Beaten, uh, it was actually a pretty good race against Aidan O'Brien's horse. And um, he was a one to two shot. I think he returned. Anyone get involved with short prices? 
Not particularly. He was a very, very small loser. Um, and he's now gone 2-1 to one for the QE2 stakes on Champions Day at Ascot. Uh, so shortened in from 5-2 to two after winning the Prix de Moulin at Longchamp yesterday. Um, I guess we, we should talk very, very quickly um, just about the Sprint Cup as well. Um, yeah. Did you watch Hay- um, Haydock on Saturday? I did not, actually. I was engaged in uh, a long cycle on Saturday and then um, had to go on the radio and then had to watch Ireland draw one all against Azerbaijan, so I did not see the sprint call, unfortunately. All right, OK. Uh, well, I'm sure you've seen the result, but Starman was chinned into second. So, uh, Emma Artiana uh, was your winner at 11-1 to 1, and then Starman was second at even money. Uh, Presumably a great quite, result for the firm. It was indeed, yeah. Uh, quite easy to back, um, Starman. Um, was around 10 to 11, even shorter than that, 5, 6 and 4 to 5 um, in the morning leading up to the race and then was pushed out all day. Um, it was a really weird run from him. He was kind of hanging his head around um, around the 2-3 furlong pole um, and then just came with the late charge. Uh, didn't quite get there, was being a short head in the end. Uh, Emma, Emma Artiana feels like, um, is it she or he? I can't remember what's in my head. No um, favour winning the whole card. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it was a that never run. happens. But it feels like Emirati Anna's been around for ages, but actually hasn't since mm. 2018, only a few years. Um, so not been around for too long. Um, but Emirati Anna got, uh, got the job done there. Uh, one that we did lay was Happy Romance. We had a really, really decent bet uh, to take out in the six figures uh, on Happy Romance at 25 to 1. Ran a, ran a fantastic race, I thought. Ran with a huge amount of credit uh, and ended up finishing fourth. So the punter didn't get the money there. We were three places. So the punter didn't get the money, unfortunately, for them. Uh, but I'm sure that they will go again. Um, and a really encouraging run for Happy Romance. And I would assume will probably go to Champions Day as well. Um, so that was probably the takeout from the Haydock card. Uh, we've got Doncaster to look forward to this week, um, where we've got the leisure out of the weekend. Um, I don't believe we've actually got betting on the leisure yet because we would have had uh, declarations coming through. I will just uh, quickly check. We have got the other races up. Um, just have a look here. Oh, we do have the ledger up. So how they bet for ledger at the moment. Um, Hurricane Lane is four to six. Um, Ottoman Emperor is five to one. Um, high definitions in the market at 13 to two. Mojo Star in there at seven, and then we are 12 to one bar. Um, so we've got a strong favourite in the shades of Hurricane Lane there. Um, we've also got all the other races priced up, as I just mentioned. Um, we did see money for one. Um, I'm just going to try and find it here, see if we still put it in there. Yeah, we did see money for one in the British Stallion Studs EBF Carry Red Phillies Nursery Handicap. Uh, 14 to one poke there. We saw money for Favourite Child. So that, uh, that, that might just be one uh, to stick mm. in the notebook. That's running in three days' time, so that's running on, on the Thursday. Uh, we've got loads of anti-post races priced up. We've got loads priced up from uh, f- for Champions Day as well in mid-October. Uh, one that we saw money for this week, uh, one of the favourites over in Ireland, was Princess Zoe for the Long Distance Cup. Um, yeah, going back for more glory. Uh, she is indeed. Uh, six to one from seven to one uh, for the Long Distance Cup. We saw some more money for uh, Princess Zoe. So if you wanted to get stuck in, in there, still a six to one chance. Um, and I would imagine that a lot will change from that race off the back of the staying race. Uh, at Doncaster, the, the Doncaster Cup, because Stradivarius has the market there at 8 to 11. True Chance in there at 130, 6 to 1 Princess Zoe. Uh, Twilight Payne is also 6. So a lot of the protagonists in the Doncaster Cup also run in the Long Distance Cup uh, when we get to Champions Day. And don't forget that we'll have our picked off and running for all the ITV races. So if you come second, um, be in a certain amount of distance, then you'll get your money back as a free bet. I believe it's up to 25 quid. So a decent little offer to get stuck into there for the feature races. Just before we finish the race, I'm going to um, list out a few figures here for you and see if you get where I'm going. Uh, five runners, nine runners, 12 runners, five runners, six runners, seven runners, three runners, three runners, five runners, four runners, seven runners, six runners, four runners, and finally, six runners, four runners, eight runners, six runners, Five runners, seven runners, and seven runners. What am I talking about? Uh, well, I don't actually know what meeting you're talking about, but I'm assuming that you are talking about uh, there being too much racing being on. That is, they're the three non all weather, um, so the three turf meetings um, in, in Britain today. I just could not believe it looking at the racing post. And I'm just wondering, like, what does that do a day like today? We're recording this on a Monday. What does that do a day like today in terms of turnover? Because for me, it's obviously it's, it's kind of quick ground at the start of September, but it's worrying signs for British racing time when you have so many small fields. It certainly is. Uh, it, I mean, to be honest, it just completely depends on the type of punter you are. Uh, you, mm. uh, you have the punters who just like to bet and, and will bet kind of race to race. Uh, then you have people that like to see the quality. Um, I, I don't know if it's a time of year thing. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming it is. We are in a weird time of year at the moment. 
um, and uh, maybe the quicker ground, but then it should, it should be absolutely fine for these summer horses. Um, but no doubt we'll be having similar conversations when we uh, get into the jump season with them and we see real, real small fields running there as well, Johnny. So, and, Indeed. Uh, and pretty uncompetitive. Um, uh, US Open tennis. Yeah, US Open tennis. So we are getting uh, close to the latter stages now. Uh, Djokovic is now an 8-13 poke to win the men's US Open. Which he uh, was from, more or less at the start anyway, wasn't he? Uh, he was 8-11 to 11 at the start, so he's okay. kicked in a, a, a couple of ticks, but only um, a uh, only a couple. Uh, the main protagonist, I believe, is actually a, a free runner heat pretty much. I'll just see if I can get it um, up how. Um, actually, 4-6 to six now, Djokovic. So since I've written my notes, he's gone out to 4-6 to six from 8-13. to 13. Uh, Medford Evan there at two to one. Uh, Zverev is there at nine to two, and then your twenty-two bar there. Um, I think Berrettini might go quite well. He's nine nine on to win his match today, um, so I think he'll be progressing, um, and he'll probably be a little bit shorter than that. Um, in terms of the women's, Ashley Barty was knocked out of the women's U.S. Uh, Open, and she was two to one, so she was very very short, uh, which means Emma Raducanu uh, shorts into nine to one. Um, if she was due to face her in the next stage, uh, she'll actually uh, face Rogers, who uh, knocked out Barty. Um, Sabalenka is a 12 to 5 favourite for the event, uh, pre previously 9 to 2. Um, Sabalenka would be a pretty poor result for us in the office. Uh, and surprisingly, Raducanu would be a great result. Um, and while we're on the that topic of Raducanu, yeah, uh, while we're on the topic of Raducanu, um, I do just want to talk about Sports Personality of the Year because she is 20 to 1 from 50 uh, to win Sports Personality of the Year. So a tiny bit of money for her. Um, you'd think that, I mean, she was actually a bigger price to win Sports Personality of the Year than she was to win the US Open. I know that. To win sports personality, you've probably got to go and win the US Open. But I did think yeah. the price disparity in the week was uh, was um, a little bit out there. I think it would. I, I think she was forty to win the US Open, and she was a hundred to win uh, sports personality of the year. But she's been clipped in um, into fifty. Um, and just while we're on, on the topic of tennis as well, we've got, a lot, got lots of offers on the tennis on the US Open. Um, if you back a player to win uh, their match, and if they get two sets ahead, then we'll settle the bet as a winner, irrespective of the match outcome. So. Just an offer to get stuck into there on the tennis while we get into the latter stages of the US Open. Yeah, a couple of big names obviously knocked out in the uh, women's events and some interest to see how Raducanu gets on such a bright prospect, only 18 years of age. Verstappen, obviously the winner in the Formula 1. What sort of uh, betting heap was he? What sort of price seen in the Dutch Grand Prix? Uh, he would have been short enough, to be fair, because it's a really, really difficult track uh, to overtake on. He was actually a bad result for us. A lot of people just thought he was going to go and get the job done and he duly did. Um, he's now 8-13 to 13 from 5-6 to, to win the Drivers' Championship um, after winning the Home Grand Prix in, in the Netherlands. It was a real quirky track, actually. I don't, I don't know if you caught any of it, Johnny, but there's banked turns. Um, it's quite a hard, tra hard track to overtake, and it did become a strategy game quite quickly. Um, Lewis Hamilton's out 6-5 to five from 10-11, to 11, and Verstappen leads by three points in the Championship. Um, those Formula One and most sport fans would have seen today. I mean, it, it's been in the news, and it was going to happen anyway, but uh, Bottas has signed for Alfa Romeo for next year. Um, which means that he'll be leaving the second seat in Mercedes. He'll be going over to Alfa Romeo and uh, George Russell will be uh, very likely. It's not been confirmed, but I would imagine that he, he will be filling the seat uh, in Mercedes and he'll be pressuring Lewis. So it'll be an interesting dynamic next year. There's loads of changes to the cars next year, but it'll be an interesting dynamic. See how Lewis takes that because he could be a successor to Lewis in the number one seat in years to come. So um, all, uh, it's all going on in, a, in, in, in the world of motorsport at the moment. I think it's probably the most exciting season there has been in recent years, to be fair. And it's, it's all going on in Atlanta as well. Again, I refer to my WhatsApp groups, a lot of Ram backers out there, but Cantley got the job done. Um, this sounded like it was exciting stuff and brilliant stuff from Cantley to win over the, to get over the line in Atlanta. Um, I, I, I mean, I personally, I thought it was really boring. Um, pure, purely because of the... Um, uh, because of the set out they have for the Tour Championship now. They they start on stagger starts, as I spoke last week in Trader Chat, and very, very quickly, it just came a match between two people. Um, so you're not a fan? No, not a fan at all. I don't think the players are either. If you look at, I mm. mean, Cantlay um, wasn't complaining yesterday when he won $15 million, but if you look at Cantlay's um, interviews before the tournament, he was just saying that it, it's not the right setup, and, and, and he was the one who was um, 10 shots in front of most of the field. So... Mm -hmm. um, it just makes it a match from too far out, and yeah, it's just it's just pretty boring. The fact that John Rahm can go and shoot the low score and not win uh, the FedEx Cup for the fifteen million dollars, and he's been the best player all year, um, seems pretty scandalous to me. Um, although I was he backed? John Rahm. Um, John Rahm was really well backed. Actually, we laid him to uh, be the end of round leader at the end of round three at around the even money mark, and then we laid him to win the whole thing at around the eleven to ten mark um, in play. So. Very, very uh, good for us to get and beat. And uh, Patty, uh, Pat, Patty Ice, as they uh, have started to call uh, pa Patrick Cantlay, 
uh, went and got the job done. Although I believe it, it's actually him who just created his own nickname, to be fair. Um, I've never <laughs> actually seen anybody call him Patsy Ice, uh, and he's just managed to come up with it. So uh, that was the goal for last week. Do you want to finish talking a bit more Premier League, Johnny? What do you think is going to happen this week in the Prem with old Ronnie coming back? Ronnie coming back? Well, it's, 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 a, it's a hard one to call because when, when Ireland played Portugal, Ronaldo was so, so bad for 87 minutes. And uh, honestly, if you were a Man United fan, you're like, what have we done here? Um, now then, he in the, ma- in the matter of what, five, six minutes, he ended up scoring two unbelievable headers. And the second one in particular, um, I, I, it's probably arguable that not many players could have done it. It's just the way he engineered himself back into an onside position and scored, obviously. They play Newcastle United. I actually have I've real reservations about this, to be honest, because, um, and at the time I was kind of saying, well, it is Ronaldo, but just, w- just watching him for Portugal the other night, he can't do anything outside the box worth talking about. He's no danger outside the box. Ireland really managed him, and he he, he didn't play that well on the night, and neither did Portugal, to be fair. Um, but he's no, he's no real work rate off the ball, and he can't do anything outside the box. And a player has to be sacrificed for him, and there might be um, kind of ramifications for Pogba and the midfield in terms of how they play. Um, yet he's such a big figure, he sort of needs to be playing. So I think it's really, really fascinating because, uh, the, you know, it is Ronaldo, but he's also, he's not getting better at this stage, and he is getting slower. And he basically needs to be inside the box. He will score goals, but other than that, Man United will be 10 players and Ronaldo when they don't have the ball. Yeah, it's a real interesting dynamic. I think mm. me, me and some of the traders were having a chat, obviously, because fantasy football is such a big thing. And he's obviously just come in and people saying, do we put him in, do we not? Um, I'm just not sure how many games it's going to start, uh, purely because mm. I, I think that they'll really utilise him for the Champions League. Um, I know that they're paying a huge wage packet for him, but it's not It's not like they've gone and spent £120 million on him or £100 million like uh, City did with Grealish or uh, Chelsea did with Lukaku. So they feel like they have to pay because they've spent the fee. Um, obviously, Man United haven't done that. They said they spent a smaller fee, although they'll be paying on the wages. So half a million a week. Yeah, so I'm, I'm just not sure how much he'll start. Could be proven completely wrong, and he'll just take over completely. I mean, maybe him taking the number seven shirt back from Cavani uh, will be a sign of things to come for Man United. Um, Ronaldo has been added into all the specials markets we've got, and so do have a look at these on the site. Um, we've got the top goal scorer market, which obviously isn't a specials market, but that's one of the main ones. Uh, Lukaku's in there at three to one. Salah nine to two. Uh, Ronnie is in there at five to one, and then six to one. Bar six to one, Harry Kane to be top goal scorer. You didn't think he'd be getting that price, would you? Uh, before the start of the season, um, we've That's also got tempting, in- Yeah, I, I don't think Ronaldo's any value at all in that market. To be honest, I can't. I just can't see him at this level. The Premier League is a, is a step up from Italy, and I, as you say, first of all, he's missed the start of the season. But like, how many games is he? Is he going to be playing every week? Every every ninety minutes, definitely not. He doesn't have the legs. No, no, no. I, 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 I certainly think that, and, 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 and I think they'll use him for Europe quite a bit. So. Um, if mm. they want to oppose him there, there's plenty to uh, be opposing him with. Uh, we've also added him into the goals contributions market. So, again, this is just goals plus assists in terms of numbers. Salah is your favourite there. He's on four at the moment at 72. Lukaku's in there at 5-1. to one. He's on one. Uh, Bruno, um, who's now going to be Ronaldo's understudy, I would imagine, is on three. He's 13-2. to two. Ronaldo's also in there at 13-2 to two on zero. Obviously, he's not played a game yet. Kane's in there at 15-2 to two on zero. And then it's 10 bar. And we've also got the first of 10 goals market. I, I feel like this is quite a fun market and, and it's hotting up quite nicely because we've got a new favourite in the shape of Mikel Antonio. He's on four uh, and he's four to one. Salah would be there on two and he would be five to one. Uh, Bruno is 11 to two on three. Lukaku is 11 to two on one. Calvert-Lewin's 15 to two on three. And then we've got Ronaldo in there on zero at 10 to one to get to the... This is Harry Kane uh, at tens, which is interesting. Yeah, Harry Kane's in there at 10 to 1. And, and, and you'd think he's just going to play all the games now. They have got a couple of half fixtures coming up. Um, I'm not mm. saying Arsenal's a half fixture, but uh, I believe they're playing Chelsea. And uh, I can't remember who they're playing after that, but they've, but they've definitely got Chelsea. And, and, and they've got Arsenal in the coming games. I think they've got Palace this weekend. So uh, a couple of half fixtures coming up for them. Um, I've been having a look at the fixtures coming up just for the fantasy football team and stuff like that. And it's interesting to see the Wolves have got some fantastic fixtures coming up. Uh, City have got some uh, difficult ones, and Chelsea have as well. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how the markets. Uh, start to fluctuate with these difficult fixtures coming up. Um, and in yeah, terms and of- obviously, Go sorry, on. yeah, and obviously Ar- Arsenal, um, such a massive period for them at home to Norwich. Um, just, uh, I think their following game is relatively winnable as well, but Arteta is still 4-9 to nine for the chop. And if you believe that they, they're not as bad as they look and they will turn around a bit, particularly in the next couple of games, you've got to be looking at someone else in that market because I, I think 4-9 to nine is very, very short. And if he turns it around, you know, he could get easily a stay of execution. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And if anybody watched the Edu um, interview, uh, I believe it was on Sky Sports, 
um, he was saying about the faith he had in the manager and the, the kind of bigger picture. So um, mm. there will definitely be value in that market if you did fancy someone else to go. If you do fancy a team just not to perform at all uh, with 15 to 2 bar Arteta. So there's probably a bit of value in there if you did want to take it on. Um, I, I can't see him going next. And hopefully we do turn around. Like you just said, we do have some nice fixtures coming up bar the one against Spurs. Uh, we do have some nice fixtures. So hopefully we can turn it around. Thanks a million, Flynn. Thank you very much. Yeah, that was Trader Chat. We got through a lot and we get through a lot again next week uh, when we know a lot more about Ronaldo. Thanks for watching.